Hi, I'm Chloe with Gardens of Babylon, and today we're gonna go over some tips and tricks for some of my favorite hydrangeas to use in the Nashville landscape. Although there are seven different subsets, there are four main genuses that we use here in Nashville. The Hydrangea paniculata, or Hydrangea arborescens, oak leaf hydrangea, Hydrangea macrophylla. The first hydrangea that I wanna talk about is the Hydrangea paniculata, or the panicle hydrangea. It is rated for full sun and is incredibly drought tolerant once it gets established. It's one of the most bulletproof hydrangeas that we use here that can actually handle our whiplash Nashville weather. Typically, the uh, blooms come on in early summer, late spring, and they'll last until, until probably the first frost. They are also one of the few hydrangeas that you can prune back. Uh, they do not require old wood pruning, which means it doesn't require blooming to occur on wood that was grown the previous year. Typically, if you have a really large panicle hydrangea, the general rule of thumb is only cutting back about 30 to 35%, meaning you'll look at it height-wise and width-wise and only go back about a third. Also, it's really important whenever you're cutting the panicle hydrangea to cut right above what's called the leaf node. Now, the leaf node is going to be what's called opposite, which means you're going to have two that come out this way, and then on the next leaf set, they're gonna go out this way and then you're gonna to wanna to cut about a quarter of an inch above that on an angle, and then that way uh, you're not gonna rot out the wood. Panicle hydrangeas are one of the only hydrangeas that are rated for full sun, which means they are great for west or south facing gardens. Um, they're not gonna scald the same way that a hydrangea arborescence or a macrophylla will burn. So hydrangeas can ideally be planted in spring or fall or any time throughout the winter. Because they are genetically pretty shallow rooted, they don't have what's called a tap root that'll really like dig into our uh, water table. We don't, we want to try to avoid planting in midsummer. The caveat to that is if you have irrigation, you can get away with a longer planting season. Season. So spring or fall is going to be ideal for these guys. So most hydrangeas are going to want acidic soil. So they're going to thrive really in like 5.8 to 6.2 pH. Hollytone is my general recommendation because it does it isn't just an acidic fertilizer. It also contains lots of um, phosphorus and potassium, which will help increase bloom production. The reason why the pH of the soil actually matters is because that is the pH at which the plants can actually uptake their critical nutrients. So the other thing to keep in mind though is that Nashville and generally the, the Cumberland region region of Tennessee has fairly acidic soil because we're a limestone bedrock with like only like six inches of organic material. So our general pH of our soil is going to lie somewhere around six anyway which is perfect for hydrangeas. One of the reasons why hydrangeas thrive so well here is we actually have a native cultivar, which is going to be our hydrangea arborescence. Now used in the Nashville landscape, one of the cultivars or nativars is going to be the Annabelle hydrangea. The same thing, opposite leaves, uh, nice serrated margin. She is going to be a little bit taller and looser and not woody, the same way that a paniculata will be. Best time to plant these is actually probably in fall. The reason being is they are a little bit dramatic about their watering and planting them right before a heavy drought season from June until September is not gonna be ideal for these girls. You're typically gonna see these in the wild around creeks. So if you ever go out to like the Harpeth River, you'll see them over at like Nears of the Harpeth over in the parking lot. Really great, fantastic native. One of the great things about these is they form a really dramatic compound rounded bloom head. And that's gonna be a uh, very prominent in your summer garden. Now the blooms, because they take so much energy or are so heavy, typically you will want to stake them with a peony cage if you're using a traditional cultivar. The best time to prune these is actually going to be in fall and you're gonna to wanna to cut them back to about 12 inches from the ground, cutting them to the node right about here. That way the new wood the next season will grow up with a slightly woodier base and then that way it will typically support itself a little bit better year after year. As far as fertilizer goes, uh, same thing. You're gonna wanna use holly tone. You're gonna want acidic soil. As with any good planting, you're gonna wanna use 50-50 native soil and some kind of organic um, amendment, especially because these are so shallow rooted and a little bit more dramatic about their watering. I 
I would recommend a heavier organic material like compost or worm castings as opposed to something like pine fines, which would still be acidic. You are gonna wanna keep that, that soil pretty acidic for these girls to flourish. So typically these are gonna come out white, um, although there are some dwarf cultivars that will have color to them, which can be really fun in a landscape. The other great thing about the arborescens is that they can handle a little bit more sun than our quincifolias or our macrophyllas. So you can put them in a south or west facing garden. I do find that they tend to thrive better in those gardens if they have access to irrigation or supplemental watering. So north or east facing would kind of be ideal. You're gonna get fewer blooms, but overall the plant is gonna be a little bit healthier and happier. This is one of the most recognizable hydrangeas in your landscape. It is an oak leaf hydrangea. While she's still gonna have that serrated margin, she's also gonna have lobing on the leaves. It's gonna be reminiscent of an oak leaf, hence her name. Hydrangea quincifolia is gonna be the Latin on that. Moving from most sun to least sun, uh, the oak leaves are typically gonna want morning sun, afternoon shade. The leaves, while they are resilient to full sun, um, will scald in the middle of our really, really hot, dry summers. Also, they are not going to want to have as wet of feet as the arborescens or the macrophyllas. So they can handle drier shade, which is a really great option for most of the hydrangeas on the market. Their blooms are actually modified leaflets. And so on these blooms, you're gonna get what's called antiquing, which is just like where your blooms will turn yellow and red in the summer, the blooms will antique to different colors. So that's one of the great things about the oak leaves is that Typically, these and the paniculatas will antique to a soft pink or red in the fall time. These are one of the unique pruning habits. So typically, your pruning on an oak leaf hydrangea will occur after the blooms are spent, which means after the blooms turn brown and look dead, typically from end of July to like the first of September. Again, rule of thumb is gonna be 30 to 35% size reduction is at the most. You're gonna wanna cut at the leaf node at an angle. A great habit to get into is once you're done pruning, to go ahead and fertilize your oak leaves with a product like Hollytone because they have to bloom on what's called old wood, which means they have to bloom, they only bloom on wood that has been grown in the season prior to dormancy. So when you feed them right after pruning, it, en it encourages really vigorous growth and then a more vigorous bloom set for the year or for the season that's coming up. As far as planting time, spring and fall is gonna be ideal for these, but you can plant all throughout winter and dormancy. Um, you can plant in summer with the caveat that you do have irrigation to keep them watered. So for a Southern landscape, this is the hydrangea macrophylla, the palm hydrangea. This is the one that everyone's grandmother planted in their garden and would have big cuttings of um, in their bouquets. This is a true shade hydrangea meaning morning sun until about 9 a.m. is about as much sun as these hydrangeas can handle. Their leaves will scald um, if they are in any more sun than that, um, especially in our Southern Hemisphere. These are definitely a wet shade preference um, as far as the soil goes. So best planting time is gonna be spring and fall, once again with a 50-50 mix with a heavier organic material like worm castings or compost, so that way they stay really, really moist throughout the season. These are also a great indicator plant for any shade garden. When they start to get dry, their leaves are gonna droop. That's typically gonna be a good sign that it's time for you to water if your plants are already on irrigation or that you need to adjust your irrigation. The macrophylla hydrangeas do bloom on what's called old wood, which means they only bloom on pieces that were grown the season before. Every spring, it's also really common, I don't know if you can see here, uh, for you to have some dead wood at the tips. When these first start to wake up in the spring, you're gonna see the leaves forming from the base and then form up to the top. Um, it's not uncommon for you to need to tip some of that dead wood out every spring, especially because we tend to get a little bit of a late freeze here in Nashville. They do love acidic fertilizer. Hollytone, once again, is a great option for these. You know, you might've seen your grandmother put coffee grounds or uh, eggshells or things like that on her hydrangeas. The reason for that is the cultivars of yesteryear needed acidic soil in order to get those big, beautiful blue 
blooms. However, there are newer cultivars where the blooms will be blue that without the soil pH being super, super acidic. Espoma does make a specific soil acidifier that you can add in um, that will help encourage the blue tint. You don't want to plant these in the middle of summer. They are really, really moisture sensitive. They're kind of the most diva-ish of the hydrangeas that we've talked about today. Um, do not want full sun, definitely need ancillary watering. Um, they definitely need a little bit more TLC. I would say while they are a good beginner hydrangea, they are gonna be a little bit more difficult to keep alive than the paniculatas or the oak leaves, for sure.